Kai, how have you been making these custom UIs? Easy. I have no social life. They're pretty, aren't they? So for all my fellow Minecraft junkies who want to show off their sick custom UIs, you need to locate your .minecraft folder. Then you need to type this into the text box, which I'll have right down there, right in the description, and then click OK. For Mac users, this may be a little different. Then you need to locate your versions folder and open it. You need to find the folder for the version of the game that you plan to play. For me, that's 1.19.2. I know, I know. Chat reporting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I gotta get that LA duplication. Come on. In the folder, you'll find a jar file name for 1.19.2 or whatever version you're looking for. You're gonna need to copy this file. Then click back to the .minecraft folder. You'll need to find your resource packs folder and open it. Then create a new folder and name it whatever you want the resource pack to be named in game. I'm going to name this one Tease UI because I'm going to be making a custom UI for Tish 7 today. One of our fellow block breakers on the block breaking SMP. Go check us out. Now you can open that folder and paste that version file from before. You'll now need to extract that file so we can access its contents. Click OK. You can now open that new folder and copy the assets folder. The assets folder is the only file we need from this folder. You can now paste the assets folder in. This will take a while, so let's speed that up. We don't need these other two files, so you can delete those now. Next, you'll need to locate your notepad. Again, if you're a Mac user, this may be a little different for you. So on the notepad, you're going to be writing in a code that's going to be basically telling Minecraft that this folder that you have is a resource pack. I'll have the exact code you need to use in the description. I actually screwed it up a little bit here. Depending on what version you plan to use this resource pack on, the pack format number may be a little bit different for you, and you can find that number you need on the Minecraft wiki, which I'll link down below. For the description, you can type anything you want between the parentheses and it'll show up right below the resource pack name in the game. Now go to File and then Save. For the file name, it'll need to be written as pack.mcmeta, and then click Save. You can now close out a notebook. Open the Assets folder from before, and you can delete everything but the Minecraft folder. Now open that Minecraft folder, and you can delete everything except for textures. You see in a pattern here? Now open the Textures folders, and you can delete everything but GUI. And now open that folder, and you can delete everything except for icons because that's the only file we're going to be changing textures for in this video. Now right click on the file and hover over open with and click Photoshop. If you don't have access to Photoshop, there are free alternatives you can use like, let's say GIMP, which I'll leave a link for down below. You can zoom in and you'll notice each icon is split up into each of its different states. You can drag over the different icons with your marquee tool to see the different dimensions, and these are very important to keep in mind. And the placement of each of these icons is very important as well. You'll notice with the vanilla texture 16x16 16 16, that the outlined items are 9x9, 9 9, and the items that aren't outlined are 7x7. 7 7. When we edit the hunger bar later in this video, it'll be very important to keep that in mind. So I'm going to pull up Discord so I can read you exactly what T is looking for with her UI. Alright, so she wants purple hearts and XP bar that matches her profile picture. And she wants teacups for her hunger bar. Makes sense. So I'm going to take a screenshot of her profile picture with the snipping tool. So we can get the color exactly how she wants it. And I'll save that to my desktop. I'm also going to open this image with Photoshop as well. I go back to my icons tab and use the rectangular marquee tool to select the vibrant red part of the heart. If you're not particular about the exact color, you can just select everything and change the color settings of the hearts, like hue, brightness, etc. Uh, you don't need to worry about uh, going and finding exact colors or anything like that. This won't apply to you. It, it will take you a significantly less amount of time to do that. <laughs> I then go back to my reference image and use the eyedropper tool to select the purple that T is looking for. I go back to the icons tab and use the paintbrush tool to fill in the selected area with the color I just selected. But you can use the paint bucket tool as well, it's up to you. 
Now select the other bits and bobs of the heart with the rectangular marquee tool. And we're going to use the color replacement tool to change the hue of these bits and bobs to the hue we're looking for without changing the value. I then go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast. I drag the brightness bar until I get the value that I'm looking for. Click OK. I use the rectangular marquee tool to hover over half of the heart and copy it. Then deselect that and drag over the half heart to the right and then paste. And it's important to remember to always merge the layers together after copy pasting because you won't be able to interact with the parts of the image that wasn't just pasted if you forget to do this. We're now going to do the heart so it'll flash when you take damage. So you're just going to use your rectangular marquee tool to drag over the hearts you just recolored and copy them. Then deselect and drag your tool over the other hearts and paste. Remember to merge the layers. Now drag over those hearts again and you're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Exposure. Drag your offset bar to somewhere around 0.3 and click OK. Now go to the red outlined heart and use your rectangular marquee tool to select the red outline. I then use the eyedropper tool to select the darker purple at the bottom of the heart and I switch to the color replacement tool to apply that color to the selected area. You'll need to click several times. Then deselect and use your rectangular marquee tool to select the outlined heart and copy it. Then deselect again. Then you'll need to scroll down and find the other red outlined heart. Then drag over it and paste. Don't forget to merge the layers. Then go to the wither hearts at the top right and drag over all of them. Go to image, adjustments, hue and saturation. Drag the hue slider until you get as close to the heart's hue as possible. Click on your eyedropper tool and select the purple of the heart. Now scroll down to the hardcore hearts and select the vibrant red pixels with the rectangular marquee tool. I use the paintbrush tool to change the color to the purple. Then select the bottom pixels of the hardcore heart with the marquee tool. Scroll up to the heart and use the eyedropper tool to select the dark purple from the bottom pixels. I scrolled back down and I filled in those selected pixels with the dark purple. Then select the dark red pixels on the hearts with the marquee tool. I use the eyedropper tool to select the purple color. I then open the color interface and find the color I'm looking for and click OK. Then use the paintbrush tool to apply the color you just selected to the selected area. Deselect. Drag over half the heart like you did before and then copy it and deselect. Drag over the half heart and paste. Merge layers. Drag over both hearts and copy. Deselect. Drag over the hearts to the right like we did before. Paste. Merge the layers. Drag over those hearts and go to Image, Adjustments, Exposure. And then drag the offset slider to somewhere around 0.3 like we did before. Deselect. I realize now that I forgot to do the hardcore wither hearts because I'm Anubis. But now we're going to move on to the experience bar. Use your marquee tool to drag over both the empty and full experience bar. Go to image, adjustments, hue and saturation. Drag the hue slider until you get your desired color and click OK. Deselect. It was that easy? Wow. Now we're going to do the hunger bar and I'm going to be designing teacups. The only suggestion I have for you is to mark out an empty area on the workspace and measure out a seven by seven area and put an outline around that to help you with the scaling. Other than that, it'll vary depending on what you're designing. It may take some time to nail the look you're going for because you're working with very few pixels here. All right, now that we got a design, we need to do the variations. So for the half eaten hunger to the right, I'm gonna design it to where you can't see the tea and the cup, but for most designs, you could probably get away with cutting it in half in some fashion. Get your marquee tool and drag over the two hunger icons. Copy, deselect, drag over the icons to the right, delete, paste, merge the layers. Drag over them again, image, adjustments, exposure. Again, drag the offset slider to somewhere around 0.3. Okay, deselect. Drag over the spoiled hunger bars and delete, paste. Merge the layers. Now you're going to want to make whatever you design look spoiled in some way. You'll see this hunger icon in game when you have the hunger effect. For these teacups, I made the tea look like a green sludge by adjusting the hue, saturation, and lightness. 
Copy paste the teacup to an empty part of your workspace. Use the marquee tool to select the pixels outlining the design. There can be some designing involved with this as well, like for this design, I decided to accentuate the roundness of the teacup at the bottom with a couple extra pixels. Fill in those pixels with white as well. Copy and paste it over the white outline hunger icon. And don't forget to delete the previous icon. Merge the layers. Use the eyedropper tool to select the red color in the next hunger icon and then paste over it. Select the outline pixels and replace the color with the red you selected. Paste over the next icon as well. Select the pixels inside the outlines of these icons you've just pasted. Now use your eyedropper tool to select the gray from the inside of the icon to the left and fill that color into those pixels you've selected. Now copy one of the outlined icons and paste it over the black outlined hunger icon. Select the outer pixels and recolor them to black. Copy that black outlined icon and paste it over the hunger icon below. Copy the normal teacup and then paste it into the center of the black outlined hunger icon. Go to edit, transform, and near the bottom you'll find flip horizontally and click that. Now we're going to replace the hunger effect icons at the very right and you probably now know how to do this so I'll save us the headache of having to go through that explanation again. Once you get that done, you can go ahead and export the file by going to File and then Export. Click Export As, keep everything exactly the same, and click Export. Keep the file name as icons and keep it as PNG. You can now locate your GUI folder again and replace the old icons PNG with the new one. Everything's done, so you can now load up Minecraft and see how it looks in game. <laughs> it looks like I may it looks like I may have moved my workspace by accident. I'll be right back. All right, that's better. Here they are. Hopefully uh T likes it. I talk like I'm getting paid to do this. All right, that that's it. That that's the video. Now get out of me swamp. You'll need to find something else to watch because this video is over. These Captain Kai Minecraft guys, redstone builds, you can't deny, so just unwind and press subscribe.